Hey there, entrepreneurs. My name is Sushant and welcome to Trip Talks. This is the show where I interview successful e-commerce entrepreneurs, business executives and thought leaders, and ask them questions about their business story and also dive deep into some of the strategies and tactics that they have used to start and grow their businesses. And today I'm really excited to welcome Will Roya to the show. Will Roya is the founder of PlayingCardDex.com and he has actually sold this business earlier uh, this year and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, that and also his new venture. Uh, PlayingCardDex.com sells a wide range of playing card decks through their e-commerce store. And today I'm going to ask Will a few questions about his entrepreneurial journey and some of the strategies and tactics that he has used to start and grow his business. So Will, thank you so much for joining me today at Trip Talks. Really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, you know, as we were just chatting a little bit, you mentioned um, you had a background in, in magic, like you were a magician yourself and you used to do magic tricks and things like that. So can you share a little bit about your kind of backstory and how you got the idea to start this uh, business? Um, yeah, well, I started performing uh, professional magic shows when I was 16. Um, I did throughout, throughout high school, college. Uh, I moved to Las Vegas. Uh, as soon as I graduated from college, uh, 1999, started doing shows here in Las Vegas, also on cruise ships and resorts. And um, during the recession around 2008, I got into doing um, selling, selling my magic tricks at special events and wholesale and stuff like that. Um, I also started doing stuff online, eBay, Amazon. And uh, I noticed uh, playing cards sold really well. Uh, so I decided in 2017, I finished up my obligations that I had booked, and uh, I launched the playing card site, playingcardex.com, and I went full-time with that on 2018, uh, grew it. We really grew during the pandemic as well, and sold it at the beginning of this year. So does that mean that when you decided to start this business, you actually stopped the performance or the performing part of it and what was the reason like did you let lose the passion i just wanted to, i just want to devote myself full time to one thing to really focus on it okay and uh, so you did not really have the background for like an e-commerce business can you share a little bit about um how you got into e-commerce did you get help mm -hmm. from other people or were you kind of the sole owner operator doing everything um, in the past, I've done different websites, mostly with some help. Um, I've been doing eBay for a long time. I've been doing Amazon on my own as well. Um, not, not a lot of stuff, um, just experimenting with different things. And um, with the uh, you know, advent of Shopify, I was able to pretty much put the whole site together by myself. So, you know, with different apps and plugins and stuff like that. And, and so the product that you started selling, um... They, they, they seem like, you know, uh, I mean, bicycle, for example, I see bl bicycle brand playing cards. Uh, so it seems like you were mostly reselling uh, items from other uh, other brands. Yes. Um, what was the also, strategy? Uh, yeah. So we had, um, I had a few different suppliers, um, um, a couple of big suppliers and a lot of smaller suppliers that we were able to get decks from. And then I also started producing our own decks as well. And I, I started funding those on Kickstarter. So we had our own line of decks too. Yeah. So whenever someone starts a business, I mean, one component of any entrepreneur or any new business is, you know, knowing that there's a market for the products that you're trying to sell. Of course, coming because you were coming from the same background and I think you were selling the items on eBay and things like that. You probably mm -hmm. knew that these products sell and there's a market for it. Was that... Was having or or was was selling these items at a smaller scale gave you kind of the confidence and the validation that yes I can create my own site and put it, put this and I can make a full time living out of this. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, yeah. The selling uh, I think it got up to around ten thousand a month on eBay, and that was kind of like proof of concept. So. So is there is there I mean do, would you call this kind of a niche market or this is? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. I would say the riches are in the niches. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, but the other thing also is like, you know, if I go to my like local dollar store, like I can, mm -hmm. I can easily find playing cards, right? Like for a couple of bucks or two or three bucks, I would say. Um, 
what what were all the products that you were selling besides the card and what about the competition i mean for something like this can someone say that you know these kind of products are available pretty much everywhere uh mm -hmm. does that not create a competition like really high competition and how you know how would someone find your site and why why, why would even some, someone bother buying from you um okay so for the like the cards you find like in the dollar store, mostly those are like low quality playing cards. They're not like printed by the United States Playing Card Company or another um, quality manufacturer. And also a lot of the decks that we sell are limited edition custom one-time prints. Um, so um, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, the other thing is uh, how we were able to carve our slice of the market is we have one of the biggest selections. So um, at any given time, we have over 2,000 different decks of cards, all on the stock, all on site. So um, kind of our, our selection is one of our biggest competitive advantages. Um, okay. Also, we're able to, sh we do our um, all the fulfillment in-house. Uh, we have a very large blog, lots of articles, hundreds of articles. So a lot of people find us through that, through SEO. And then uh, loyalty program, always adding new products. To get people coming back pretty much and since you started this business like did you find that you know as e-commerce has become easier and easier to like you know the barrier of entry is as you said you know with shopify and all the other apps and the whole ecosystem of e-commerce that has been created do you find that more and more such um sites came up uh, or did you you know you you still had kind of your uh, value proposition and, and the kind of collectors uh, kind of cards um, that kept you different from any of the other competitions in the market. Yeah, I think just our, our selection and just getting our product out there um, kind of uh, helped us from like new upstart competitors. So we had gained a pretty good reputation. Um, also, we did, um, we do weekly newsletters, emails every week. Um, almost never miss them. So, okay. and, um, and and then we try and do uh, promotions too, a lot. So, so some kind of special. Okay. And you mentioned that you did start to do a Kickstarter as well. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, while you were doing your performance magics and, and things and, and still selling on eBay, um, you were somehow building an audience so that when you created this site, um, it helped you in any way, or was it like a, when you launched, it was completely, um, from scratch? no, not really. It was kind of from scratch. I could, I had some emails from the eBay sales and then it was mostly like going into, um, like forums and stuff and like stuff like that, let people know I was out there. So. One of the approach that I've seen for a variety of different founders who start like, you know, these niche businesses um, is that they create the audience first. So for example, you know, you have this, uh, the skill of, you know, being a magician or being able to be the show person, you know, be able to perform magic and basically attract people to, to view that. Did you ever try to use that like as creating YouTube videos or uh, putting videos out on other platforms so that you, you know, number one, you attract people to your magic, you know, the performance of magic. Um, and then of course, you know, you have this website and offering. And mm -hmm. so, so you're basically building the audience uh, through your own personality, your own magic, magic skills, but then you have the product to sell. Did you take that approach or you were like completely a business person selling cards yeah i was um basically strictly business for the most part you know i do some facebook videos and stuff like that um but i wanted the feature of the website the business to be the product that's what i wanted the focus to be okay and of course you decided to sell your site now um mm -hmm. What was the reason behind that, and uh, and of course I that I would like to talk more about you know your new ventures and things like that. Um, yeah, it had been about five years, so we did a really well during the pandemic, um, and I was just uh, getting a little bit bored with it, and I'm just I was just I'm ready for something new, 
So I'm, I still love the playing cards and I've been helping the owners pretty much 20 hours a week for the last six months. And I'll probably still help them in some minor capacity going forward, like content or creative stuff like that. So one of the big reasons was I didn't have to sell it. So I thought it was a good time to sell it. <laughs> okay. Um, no, that's, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, how do I, I mean, um, many times or sometimes in the past when I've spoken to, to founders, you know, they were kind of the buyer of these sites. So we mm-hmm. had discussed how they went about, you know, some of the criteria and things like that of finding a, a good business to buy an e-commerce mm-hmm. business, especially. Uh, from a seller's perspective, can you share a little bit about when you decided Hi, Lucas. to... Sorry, my dog. <laughs> uh, when you decided to sell, like what mm-hmm. was the consideration for you and how did you find a buyer? I mean, how did you put a price on your business and did you list your site somewhere or did you find the buyer through like your network and so forth? So I went through a brokerage, which is called a quiet light. And they were able to help me come up with the valuation, everything. And they pretty much helped me find the buyer. So, um, and the founder of that company actually put out a book that um, I read that was really helpful to kind of learn the process before I started the process. Um, sorry, what uh, did you say the name of the company or? Uh, quiet light quiet, quiet light. light quiet light quiet yeah. light okay okay i'm going to check that out i didn't i didn't know that there was su- su- such a company that yeah there. so uh, so i'm assuming like they they took like a certain percentage of the sale uh, as part of the yeah pretty much right around 10 per- 10 is pretty standard oh wow <laughs> yeah it's quite a big chunk and then you th- uh, figure you know 30 percent or so to taxes so <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> So that's like 40 percent right there yeah yeah it, it comes out there a lot so okay so are you are you satisfied at the end of it like do you find yeah there's a certain uh yeah because there's a certain number that i want to clear so um and then when i pay the taxes uh, i closed at the beginning of this year so at least i'm investing what i estimate i have to pay in taxes for a whole year so so at least i can get a little bit of it back okay um, before I get into, you know, I also, um, I also own the commercial building, so they're paying me rent, the, okay. the new owners to operate out of that same building. So, uh, which is the commercial building would be the warehouse or is it like, an yeah, the, it's like a warehouse office space. Okay. Okay. So you have a lot of, I'm assuming a lot of inventory there then, and yeah. kind of your, your fulfillment operation run from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you talk about a little bit, you know, when you were running the business off the, or just the operations of the business? Um, what, you know, how many, what, what was your, what did your team look like? What was the marketing like? How did you fulfill the orders and things like that? So um, I had uh, one full-time in-house shipping manager who did the shipping and everything. And then one part-time helper who would help with shipping and other miscellaneous tasks. Um, I would be in most days uh, to help out like with incoming orders or if there was a lot of orders that day, because we always wanted to get everything shipped out as fast as possible. Um, I had a content person who wrote most of the articles for the site, the blog articles. I had a Facebook advertising manager. I had uh, someone who did social posts. And these are all freelancers. Hmm. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. And then uh, several freelance artists who would design the deck of cards. So I mean, and I would like... and I would do I would do all the marketing and put the product on the website and stuff like that. Okay, I mean, it's still a pretty decent operation. I mean, you, you were doing yeah. it seems like a pretty decent amount of revenue. So um, seems like a big market in this. Uh, it's still a niche category, but uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of demand for, for this. Um, and one of the other things, like one of the reasons I decided to sell, because I knew there was ways to grow the business, but um, I think I think my strong suit is more in starting a business and growing it to a certain amount. Like I don't want to be, have to manage too many people. It's just not, not my skill set or something I want to do. So that was one of the other reasons that I was ready to move on from the business as well. Okay. So you, uh, your goal as a business owner is to to keep a business uh, pretty light, 
uh, or you know uh, operationally uh, speaking and and you're satisfied with that i mean you're not uh, but but at the same time the the other side of that is that um, the kind of profit or the kind of revenue that can come from growing a business really you know big you mm-hmm. you know you're kind of losing out on that so you but you don't mind that right well uh we did really good profit wise um just because we we're operating um pretty pretty slimly on in terms of staff and stuff um but once you hit like a certain revenue threshold it's like you will have to hire you have to hire for that growth which will hurt your profit so it just wasn't i wasn't ready to go to that like next growth stage Okay. So of course, I mean, now you have kind of the lessons of building and starting and growing this business. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask the question from two perspectives. You know, the, the one thing that I want to ask is if you were starting the same business today, mm-hmm. you know, given that you know how the market has changed or how maybe you have more competitors and so forth, mm-hmm. um, how would you start the same business today? And and of course, I, I definitely want to. You are in the process of starting another business. So I, I want to ask mm-hmm. uh, what lessons you're kind of taking from this business into the next one. Um, I think I would start it. I'm like uh, the new business I'm working on is is pretty much the same model. So I'm starting it pretty similarly. Um, the only thing I'm doing differently is I'm not doing anything on Amazon to start. So I'm going to mostly try to focus on the Shopify store, which I did for playing card decks. And you think you can still kind of make a, um, get your share of the market, like what kind of marketing, um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what marketing you think will work now in, in today's environment to really drive uh, revenue for, for your, for this business? Um, yeah, I'm basically going to try this try the same strategy that I did before, which is, you know, start on eBay, try to grow audience there, test switch products, sell well, um, you know, email marketing, text marketing, and then uh, eventually some paid advertising, um, focus a lot on SEO as well, um, because that's much lower cost and try to run ads all the time. So So mostly, mostly slow organic growth. So basically, you, just like any experienced entrepreneur would do, you would first test out the new market that, that you're getting into through eBay. Right. You wouldn't just, you know, start a website and start selling. Yeah, well, I'm, um, I'm in the process of building both the eBay store and the website at the same time um, because I know the products that I'm getting, um, some of them just like, just like a certain line does millions of dollars on Amazon a year. So I know there's a market for it. So, okay. So and it's and in the, the it's in, it's in the puzzle niche. It's basically like jigsaw puzzles, games, stuff like that. Okay. So how uh, and that was I guess was not completely related to magic. Uh, how did you come to learn about this new market, or what advice would you give to any new entrepreneur who's thinking about starting a business, uh, a new business uh, of you know figuring out a new product idea or you know, which market or niche to get into? Is there like, do you have some sort of a template that you're using or, you know, any? No, I would say, you know, do something that you have somewhat interest in. um, Something that you can source, preferably multiple vendors. Um, I like, um, besides the playing card decks, we also started a tarot website too, that um, called uh, tarotmerchant.com. And that's another site we did on the side. so yeah, it really it can almost be anything really. So obviously some things have a bigger market than others, but if it's not as big of a market, maybe it has less competition. So So when you talk about sourcing, are you are these kind of products are you thinking mostly around going to a, an Asian market because that's where you can get these items at a lower cost. And can you share a little bit about how, what is your process of source, sourcing these? Things? Yeah. So um, for, for my sourcing for the new business puzzles, I'm going to wholesale shows and toy shows and finding vendors that way. Um, also, there's a great website now that um, you can go to. Um, I think you do have to have an existing, existing store to qualify but anyone can look at it it's called fair.com 
Yep. And it's it's an incredible wholesale site. So so fair.com isn't that more of like uh, these uh, new brands that people are creating that may not be kind of mainstream, but still have like quality products uh, that you can purchase and use. Yeah, I've noticed a them. lot of a lot of different stuff on there. So because um, they had playing cards on there. I found puzzles on there. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. And they allow you to buy, uh, I guess, uh, smaller quantities. You, you don't have to buy thousands of items to. No, a lot, a lot of them, it's uh, minimum order, a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks. And then once you're on it for a little while, they even give you sixty days to pay. So, um, if you're doing this, you know, the fair model of wholesaling, um, mm -hmm. is it kind of uh, white label? Because if you're buying the same product from, uh, you know, this wholesaler and they're selling the same item at a different website, mm -hmm. um, how do you compete with that? Uh, do they allow you some flexibility in terms of pricing your items or, or is it kind of white label? Yeah, you kind of have to follow the, the map policy, you know, the minimum allowed price. Um, so you're selling it pretty much for the same price everyone else is selling it for. So, so my whole strategy is just to have as many different products as possible to attract a wider audience. So, okay. So, to create a new business that you're creating right now, of course, to have those, you know, the inventory that you're uh, going to have, um, you have to have some. You have to put some investment towards the inventory itself. Can you share a little yeah. bit? Of, I mean, that that's that's a personal investment, and that also represents some risk. How do you manage that risk as a as a new uh, business owner? Um, yeah, I think that's the minimum part. I think if you were going to start doing ads or have to get it like a retail space, that would be much more expensive because at least with the products that you're buying, you you own them and you can always sell them down the line sometime. Um, so like when I was starting building this new business, I've been invested probably like um, probably four thousand dollars into three hundred different types of products so far. So and I'm hoping to probably get up to around a thousand different products by the end of the year. So I just look at that as an investment to start it. And and with this fair model, um, do do the wholesalers, are you able to ask them, you know, kind of a sales history of the items that they're selling so that you can you have some data to understand if it's kind of a selling item or it's you know it's just a non-selling yeah. item. Every vendor is different, but you can just ask them, hey, what's your best sellers? Stuff like that. So, Okay. That's very nice. And and the they give you a good uh, um, margin on these items? Yeah, it's usually, um, you know, 50%. Okay. That's pretty nice. That's pretty decent. But um, if you go to like the toy shows and, and uh, the wholesale shows, usually if you buy it, place an order at the show, they'll give you an additional discount or a free freight or something like that. So. Okay. Um, so as you're starting this new business, um, what do you think is the, I mean, of course you have to put the sweat equity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, without, without hard work, no business is going to work, but what do mm -hmm. you think is the, are the biggest risks for you? And do you ever think is, you know, you put up, put in all the hard work, I mean, all the experience that you have, you have, done your due diligence in terms of finding mm -hmm. the best selling item, having the highest possible profit uh, mar margins and so forth. Um, but there's never a guarantee of success. So how do you see risk versus benefit in terms of starting this new venture? And uh, do you ever lose sleep over it? Or, or you know, you're like, no. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I know that this is going yeah. to work um, at a certain point. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I'm in a financial position where I don't really need to worry about money right now. Um, so my whole thing is building the new business slowly and at my own my own pace. So if I can only put in two hours a day because I'm still working part time for uh, the business I sold, that's fine. Um, and eventually, as I phase out of PlayingCardDex.com, then I'll have more time to put into the new business. Um, but I think for any entrepreneur who has a job, who's starting something, you really need to work, put in those nights and weekends and wait till that business is grossing at least 10,000 a month. And you're making at least 25% profit before you 
even think about, you know, doing it full time. So what is the difference between, so the model that you are choosing uh, is kind of, uh, you know, um, you're buying wholesale and then selling direct to consumer. So basically your value add is kind of the, the marketing aspect of it, right? Yeah, I also uh, plan to develop some of our own products as well. Okay. Like our own puzzles um, and stuff like that. And do you think that's a better model? Because, uh, of course, there are a lot of e-commerce businesses which are kind of like, you know, their own brand and mm -hmm. they're able to control their cost and uh, you know, they, they build the brand and, and, you know, there's probably a bigger upside there. Um, mm -hmm. How that's, do you? That's very uh, cost intensive, though. If you're going to yeah. build your own brand with your own products from scratch, that's I think very risky, you know. So, yeah. so I'm I'm kind of doing a hybrid model, so okay. wholesaling and creating products as well. So, yeah, because a new brand, even if the product is known, I guess you have to get uh, uh, you have to build awareness for your brand, and that's like you're doing everything from scratch, right? And you have to build up several skills, skews before other suppliers will even look at carrying your product. Definitely. Um, with your previous business and even the new business, um, I know you mentioned you were selling on eBay, Amazon, some of these marketplaces. Mm -hmm. um, and with the new business, you said you don't want to sell on Amazon. What, was there a reason uh, for that? Um, no, because I think it's just because um, the consumer on Amazon shops by price more than anything else. And if you're not the lowest price, you're not even going to get the buy box. Um, unless you're brand gated, anyone can change your listing. So there's just lots of issues. There's a, a, a much higher return rate on Amazon. So um, I would, I would um, want to do Amazon if it was, um, I was doing FBM. Um, I would consider FBA uh, if we had a, a brand gated for our own produced products. I think that would be better. Okay. And your primary markets, uh, did you sell globally? Were you selling mostly in North America? 90% uh, domestic, 10% international. Okay. Can you share a little bit about your fulfillment uh, process, fulfillment and shipping? Um, mm -hmm. Did you do everything? I know you mentioned you had a shipping manager and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems like you were fulfilling, I mean, you had enough volume to justify having your own um, shipping processes. When you were smaller, um, did you did you do something, did you still fulfill in-house or were you like getting- Yeah, we always did fulfillment in-house. So I would do it, I, I, I almost always had at least someone part-time helping, so. And is there um, is there a risk associated with going with like a third party fulfillment company? Um, I don't know. Um, since I've never gone down that route, um, I know there's good ones and there's bad ones. So you have to do your due diligence. Um, the thing with playing cards, what we were selling, is it's a, a very delicate item. So you have to be very careful with it, inspect it before you ship it, make sure you ship it the right way. Um, that's one of the reasons why we gain loyal customers because the way we package and ship stuff. So, you know, a 3PL would, wouldn't work for us. So, um, because um, maybe logistically, but if we wanted to provide the service that we want to provide, it couldn't have been done, so. Um, every entrepreneur's journey, there's always, you know, failures, mistakes made, lessons learned. Um, can you share like, given that you're coming coming out of a business, um, mm -hmm. when you look at your last business on a holistic level, you know, everything that you did to start your business grow, um, what, what, what do you think were some of the big mistakes made or, you know, what do you now think looking back is, you know, that you could have done something differently that would have maybe brought in extra revenue or mm -hmm. you know, maybe have saved some cost or maybe a mistake that you made um, which could have killed your business or something like that. Can you share like some of the big lessons out of your mm -hmm. previous business uh, experience? Um, well, I tried lots of things and I think any entrepreneur should too, um, but not try to do too many at one time. Like um, 
we tried affiliate program that didn't really work for us. We tried uh, merchandising some different things that didn't work for us. Um, things that did work for us is we built a loyalty program that was very popular. Um, uh, after delaying it for a year or so, we did um, the afterpay program uh, where people could buy now, pay later. That was pretty successful. Um, texting um, got into that. That was that worked out really well. Um, and um, yeah, so I think the. Um, not really any big mistakes or regrets, I don't think. So um, I think the things that I would do if I was still running the company would be I would start Amazon FBA. Um, I'd run ads on our blog for revenue. And I would do uh, pursue whole, wholesale customers to sell our decks too. So those are three opportunities I didn't take advantage of. But those are kind of for the new owners to take advantage of. So ads on blog, which means that your blogs were getting probably a decent amount of traffic. Yeah, lots of traffic. Okay, wow, very interesting. Um, and what is the benefit of FBA? Because that would uh, that would help take some of the the cost of post fulfillment customer service and so forth. Yeah, and then th that would just be for our own self-produced decks. So we actually, okay. um, and we actually developed a case that we could put them in to prevent any damage from them shipping in transit, no matter how how they were packed. So it would just be for like a couple dozen decks. Okay. Um, now I'm going to move on to uh, well, before I go to the rapid fire section. Um, do you have a future vision for your business? I know for the new business, I know you mentioned that you like to keep things to, you know, you, you know, you want, you like starting a business and growing to a certain extent, but then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what is your future vision for the new, uh, new business that you have? Um, it's going to be pretty much the same as my last business. Um, hopefully grow it to a certain size and sell it in like five years. Wow, so it's kind of like a repeatable process. Yeah. Um, do, do you not think about starting then two business? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> starting no, two because, business. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, because I did I did kind of start a second business while I was doing the playing card decks, and that was a tarot card decks, and that is something I, I somewhat regret um, because I wanted a way to grow revenue. I thought, oh, I'll just start another website, and um, it just – it. I wasn't able to devote the time to it. And right when I launched it was kind of during the pandemic and we were just so busy with just the playing cards, but I'd already built it up and stuff. So. Okay. Was, was one of the reasons, I mean, you, you mentioned previously also that, you know, you sold the business when, when you didn't like, you were not looking like, you know, when 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 the business was still in good condition, uh, you know, coming right. out of the pandemic, like what was was one of the reasons that you sold the business was because you still had the sales coming in, but you were kind of uh, uh, concerned that maybe post pandemic uh, the sales numbers are going to go down. And uh, uh, I don't think they would go down. Right. I I just think um I just I think um there's room for definitely growth. Um, but um. I, I was just ready to move on and I'm not ready to take it to the next level. So. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our, but if a sale, uh, but, but with that being said, if the sale didn't happen, I, I would be happy to run it for the next three years, five years, whatever. So. For sure. Um, I'm going to now move on to our rapid fire segment. In this segment, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a few quick questions and you have to answer them maybe in uh, one or one or two words or a sentence or so. So okay. the first one is one book recommendation for entrepreneurs or business professionals and why? I would say um, one I read recently, which was kind of eye-opening is um, How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis. And it was just um, insightful, the process one guy took amassing a fortune and and if you'd want to even do that and and the philosophy behind it and i thought that was a pretty interesting read that that book i, I actually have that book 
mm-hmm. I, I always keep it by my side because you know I really like uh, the information that's in there. It's very very uh, practical, I guess, from his perspective. Um, and Felix Dennis was Dennis was also. I mean, he had run this empire for uh, the, the magazine empire, right? And he was kind of a poet himself, so he definitely had a certain facility with words. So. Uh, I think one of the reasons that book that book is also so impactful is by you know just the way it is written. I think the 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 words themselves are kind of uh, powerful powerful also in that book. That's one of the reasons too. I decided to start another business um, because uh, he he talks about uh, why why make other people rich when you can make yourself rich. Because um, I was thinking I do advising and consulting, but I decided you know what I wouldn't be happy with that. I'd rather just start a new business, maybe make no money for two years and then, but eventually have another payout. Definitely. Uh, An innovative product or idea in the current e-commerce retail or tech landscape that you feel excited about? Um, I think AI is interesting, but I think it has a long way to go, but it's fun to fool around with. Definitely. It's it's coming and yeah, nobody knows what it's going to look like. Um, A business or productivity tool or software that you would recommend or a productivity tip? Um, I, I like to be old school. I keep a written schedule. Um, I just find it easier for me. I have a, uh, I usually have an extra notepad too of what, like what I have to get done that day. Um, so my thing is don't rely on technology too much. So I always try to keep my email box empty as well. That's good, good advice. Um, a startup or business in e-commerce, retail, or tech uh, that you think is currently doing great things. So another startup or business. Um, um, a couple of the companies that I admire, there's one company called uh, BarkBox that delivers uh, dog treats every month. It's a subscription business. And um, they run their company really well. I've had to do some customer service with them when I had an issue and they take care of it. Um, I also really admire the company Uline, the shipping supplies. I've been dealing with them for years to get my shipping supplies. I'm really impressed how they run uh, such a large organization so well. So, yeah, I've, I've done a business with Uline also, and they have a great e-commerce presence also. Mm-hmm. Um, a peer, entrepreneur, or business person whom you look up to, or someone who inspires you. Um, I got to be honest, I don't do a lot of networking, so I I won't really know how to answer that one. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, And final question, best business advice you ever received or you would give to another entrepreneur? The more you have, the more you'll sell. The more you have, the more you'll sell. So which says that you need to have more items, more SKUs, and and thus you will sell more? Is that? Or Or some kind of combination. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, I will I will ask you one final question, which I'm still kind of wondering. So you started your career as as a performer, and at a certain mm-hmm. point, you kind of said goodbye to that area of your mm-hmm. uh, career. What was the reason for that? What uh, what um, decide, How do you decide my uh, my first daughter was born? My first child around 2008, um, or actually it was uh, 2007. And remember that recession in 2008. So yeah. I took like six months off from entertaining. And then when I got back into it, there just wasn't the the budget, the market for it as much. So that's when I got more into sales um, and started doing more selling then. But do you still have the passion? Like, do you still do some magic tricks in, in your personal no. time? No, no. <laughs> it, was more of a, it was more of a business for me. I enjoyed it, but it was it was more of a business. Okay, that's that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, those those were all the questions that I had. I really enjoyed speaking with you. A very different mm-hmm. perspective uh, today because you know you're just uh, coming out of a new business, uh, an old business, and starting a new business. So, um, some some great insights uh, there for sure. Uh, so yeah, really really appreciate uh, you joining me today. Would you like to share like the URL of your new business? Yeah. So the new business is going to be called um, Puzzle Merchant. Um, the website's not up yet, but you can find Puzzle Merchant on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, but there's not a lot there right now. So, All right, puzzlemerchant.com. So, but I should have the site launched um, towards um, the end of uh, third quarter. 
Awesome. Well, Will, thank you again for joining me today at Trip Talks, and I wish you all the very best in your new new venture. Hopefully, it will be as successful and more uh, as your last venture. So, uh, thank you again for sharing your story and joining me uh, today at Trip Talks. All right, thank you.